going on guys? Matt at Mendelton Motorsports here. Another episode of Behind the Tune. So up strapped to the dyno today, we have a 2001 C5 Corvette LS1 manual transmission car. So last fall, this guy, or last summer, late last summer, this guy brought this car to me um, with a cam and headers, and I did a tune on it at that point. And he didn't think that was quite enough, so he uh, put an ANA SI trim on it. So this is the ANA kit, really nice kits. I've installed these in the past, they work really well, C5s and C6s. Um, this is the SI, like I said, this is the SI trim. Um, this is kind of the self contained, more latest unit offered from Vortec. That's kind of that six to 800 wheel range. It's really good, it's good for that type of power range. Um, so again, this car has, um, not sure on the cam, can't quite remember what cam is in it. Pretty decent sized cam for an LS1. It's got long tube headers on it, uh, off-road midsection, and uh, stock intake manifold. Obviously the, the bigger injectors, I think they're 65 pound an hour injectors. Um, yeah, otherwise he did do a rear end in this car and a clutch. So it's got a stronger, it's got a diff build and it's got a twin disc clutch in it. Um, so this is on pump gas. So this is where we're at. I've done quite a bit of dialing in today. So this car, I'm doing a speed density tune. So HP Tuners has a uh, two bar speed density. So you use a, I believe what's a Cobalt SS map sensor, um, which you replace the stock map sensor with that. And then you can then read into boost. And instead of using the mass airflow sensor, this is just using the map sensor. So speed density only. Um, I find that on these types of setups with these early P01 computers, um, that works better than mass airflow and a blow through configuration. Once you get these, these older style, this style math, once you get these things into a blow through situation, they, they just don't work that great. They get real noisy and the signal gets real choppy and you end up with kind of an inconsistent air fuel ratio. So HP Tuners was nice enough to come up with a custom operating system that we can switch the car over to, switch the ECU over to, where it will read into boost and you configure the scaling for the map sensor um, up to this, this, this sensor will read up to 15 pounds of boost. So this car, we're not seeing that kind of boost. Um, this pull here, I'm seeing about 10 pounds. I am, I've been fighting with this car a little bit. Um, I had to do a breather vent, uh, vent the PCV system and the, the crankcase, which the, uh, the owner didn't install that portion of the a a kit. So I had to get that settled out, figured out and sorted out. Um, then I was fighting some belt slip issues. So first couple pulls, I was only seeing five pounds of boost. Um, knew that was something wrong there. And uh, he just didn't have the tensioner tight enough. So, um, but unfortunately, since I was doing pulls on it, you can see how deep this belt is kind of into this groove. Um, the belt's worn out. It's, it's chucked quite a bit of dust off of it. I finally got it tight. Seeing 10 pounds of boost. I know these kits make 10 pounds again because I've done these before, but it's, it's just wavering a little bit the top. So he's gonna have to go back in here and uh, put a belt on it. But for tuning purposes, I am able to see um, all the boost that that blower is gonna make at you know, 66, 6700 RPM. So, so yeah, so that 614 is where I'm at. Um, air fuel's dialed in. I was trying to play with some timing up here. Um, I got the timing, what I feel is pretty aggressive for 91. And uh, so I, I was trying to add some and it wasn't making any more power, so I just backed it down. It's upper teens. We'll look at the data log after this, this final pull I do. Um, but so far, so good. Um, this is about where I expected this thing to be for power. Um, obviously, if we had 85, better fuel, we could put a lot more timing on it. We could put another five, six degrees of timing on it. And this thing would probably make closer to 700 wheel on good fuel, higher octane fuel. Um, the supercharger, I've made 800 wheel with on C6 LS3 cam stuff applications on the 85. Um, when you're pushing the boost a little harder on, you know, like ANA has a flip drive setup that you can add a separate belt that drives just the supercharger and it's a little bit different setup. Um, but in lieu of all that, this is, this is doing really well. This thing is going from, I think it made 400 before to over 600. So 200 gain at the tire is pretty significant. He's going to 
have a hand. He's going to have a. It's going to be. Things going to be a handful for sure. So I'm going to set the camera down. We're going to do one more. One more hit on the dyno. Spin this thing up one more time, and uh, I'm expecting it to be about the same. Um, I did. This is the third one I did where it was 614. So I've kind of hit hit it where it's going to be. But you can kind of see right here where this is where I'm thinking I'm getting a little belt slip up in here where this little dip is. Um, the timing there feels real consistent through here, but I'm seeing some kind of choppiness in the map sensor curve. And I'm just thinking the belt's just, and I can smell it. You can smell that belt is just getting hot and there's dust around the blower. And so, but I know we're still hitting 10 pounds and I know what this, this is what this kit is good for, especially with a cam and headers. So I know we're hitting, um, we're hitting the boost that this thing is going to make even with a good belt. So it's just starting to get just a smidge inconsistent up top there. But I'm going to set the camera down, we'll spin it up one more time, and we'll go over to the data log. So like I said, I didn't expect it to make any more, I didn't change anything in the tune-up. But it pretty much backed it up, backed up the torque. We lost 0.3 peak, <laughs> so I'm okay with that. That's pretty consistent, 614.0, 613.7, and 514 torque for both. So you can see the trend, it's pretty much the same thing. I'm pretty conservative, we'll look at the data log. But you can see, kind of like in, you know, kind of like how a centrifugal works. This is pretty typical of a centrifugal dynograph on pump gas. So um, I gotta be pretty conservative with the time. You can kind of see here where right about 4,200, it was, it was really wanting to knock it down in here in this area, so I had to have a lot of timing out of it. Um, and then obviously with the cam and as, as you start to build RPM, um, the engine gets efficient. And as the engine gets efficient, it starts wanting more air and it, more air is available to, to flow through the engine. So the supercharger isn't working as hard and it can't put as much boost. So you can see, um, down here, I really tried to maximize as much timing in any centrifugal setup. I always pay attention to down here. As you, you know, even if, even though this thing is making 10 pounds of boost out the top, it's only making three, four pounds down here. So to give it a little bit more of a, you know, a nudge when you roll onto the throttle and give you a little bit more of that punch from having, you know, obviously a supercharger on your car, um, I'll always try to maximize the timing in the bottom end, especially with a cam and a centrifugal blower. It just because there just really isn't a whole lot of bottom end to start with. Um, and the centrifugal just really wants to add power up out the top. So you can kind of see how, but I gotta, I gotta play by the fuel we have and you can kind of see how, you know, up until that point, I gotta have the timing pretty soft. And then as the cam and the blower, the cam starts to come, in, um, come into tuning and the blower starts to make boost, that's where it really kind of takes off here at, you know, 4,500 RPM. And he's, He's gonna really feel that for sure, right at that point where it's really gonna to wanna to take off, probably where it's gonna to wanna to blow the tires off. Um, especially once you get it above 5,500 where you know it just starts building from there. So, um, and obviously, you know, it's just having to have the timing. I have it pretty rich and the timing is obviously has to be conservative. So you're gonna have a graph that ends up a little bit, little bit wavy like that versus with E85 where you can push the timing all the way out right to MBT and everything's super efficient. Um, and it's nice and smooth, but this is typical. This is how they are. Um, it looks really good. So we'll go in the car, pick this laptop up, scoot in here, grab the laptop. All right, get this thing angled so the outside light isn't messing with my, I'm always gonna have that glare. Sorry about that guys, but it's hard to get around it. Anyway, so that's good. All right, so you can see out the top there, 168 kPa. It's about 10 pounds of boost. Our atmosphere here is about 99, 98, 99 kPa. So air fuel ratio. So you can see I'm, I start a little lean. This little rich spot right here, so air fuel ratio, I'm looking at this yellow line. Um, that's just as the transient for me punching the throttle. It gives that a little extra bump in fuel. Then it, as it comes in, leans out to, again, I always am trying to optimize kind of that bottom end power in these centrifugals. So you can kind of see how the timing reflects that 
dip in the power. So right at 4,200, I was pointing out. And this is just, you can see, you can see I even still picked up a little knock. That's actually the first dyno pull in probably five or six that I picked up knock down here, just a smidge. Um, so I'm really trying to put the timing to it down in here and I was trying to lean it out a little bit too. But you can see that I brought some fuel into it here because it did want to knock, right? At that three, between three and 4,000, it was being really knock sensitive. So you gotta, you know, you gotta tune it, tune it by what you got. The knock sensor systems on these things are pretty good, even on these older uh, P01 computers with the old resonant style uh, single wire sensors. Um, so right at 4,200, you can see I got a lot of timing pulled out of it and that's where it was just kind of flat up into that point. And then with the combination of the timing ramping in and the boost ramping in, that's where you get that big surge. Uh, air fuel, obviously 0.8 there. I, I'm you know, well into um, you know, being rich enough and then out the back, I'm, I'm rich and kind of progressively richening it up until that where it's kind of peaking at 6,600. And I got it really rich because that's really where the boost is trying to. And then as the power is kind of trying to trail over, I was just letting it go a little leaner just to try to help carry the power out. But I think I got the limiter in on this thing at like 6,900. So there's really no reason to rev it any higher. So, so you can kind of see here on the boost line, if I can get it on the camera here, see how it's like. 159 and 160 where it's trending and there's just this little bit where where I'm moving the mouse cursor over where I think the boost line should be but it just stayed flat and then picked up I think that's where I'm picking up a little bit of slip and that's where that some of that waviness on that first run I showed you guys is coming from so it's just it's just starting to slip a little bit and then catching from the heat so that's just a sign that the belt's worn out um, and unfortunately that's just how it was I did you know three four pulls on it like you know with only five pounds of boost. And I know this, these are supposed to make, you know, nine, 10, sometimes 11. And so I dug into it a little bit and we, we tightened the tensioner up quite a bit and the boost came way up. I was like, I was not even making 500 wheel or just barely 500. And so I knew something was wrong. So once we got that fixed, we got, we got it up to 600 where it should be. And we still have a little bit of issue going on. So he's gonna have to probably replace that belt. Um, but again, I'm still seeing the, the boost that this kit will make even with a good belt. It's just starting to waver a little bit. And a couple of the pulls I did, I had a nice flat straight boost run and I know my air fuel was good. So, so again, I'll go back to, um, you know, I've talked about like mass airflow sensor tuning and most of the GM stuff is mass airflow dominant where the mass airflow sensor is the primary sensor that the ECU is using or the PCM, I guess you'd call it in one of these cars. Um, the PCM is, is using to monitor how much air is flowing into the engine. And then from there, it comes up with an air mass and it knows the displacement of the engine and it can inject a certain amount of fuel knowing the injector size. So, and then it then uses just like so the newer PCMs, there's an air mass for timing and then RPM obviously. But this is being, this being a little different since it's a speed density, be more like a Holly. So I did that Holly car oh, a couple weeks ago um, with a Holly Terminator on it, and that just uses a VE table. So this is what this system is. So um, HP Tuners has a couple of custom operating systems for some of these different ECUs or PCMs that GM has and uses a VE table like this. So you got manifold pressure on the Y axis and you got RPM on the X axis. So basically then you're just, you're I'm following my air fuel line. Okay, so let's say I wanted to, you know, like it's a little rich there, but I want it to be rich. But let's say you wanted to lean that out there. You look at 6,300, you're at 159 kPa for boost. And you're gonna probably come in here and maybe change, you know, right at 160 for kPa and on 6,000, 6,400, probably change those two cells to lean that out. Maybe pull a couple percent out of those two cells and you'd see a little bit of a reduction in fuel at that point right here. So. Um, diff a little different than a mass airflow curve where you're just reading mass airflow frequency and changing the amount of air that the PCM is calculating by that frequency. So I will often, just like a timing table, I will often use a 3D model when I'm looking at these tables. Um, you can get a really nice idea of if you got any jagged spikes or valleys going on, which can cause, you know, drivability concerns. Um, 
So this is pretty much where I'm gonna be with this. I gotta do a little bit more drivability with it. It's, it's a little bit lean in some spots on like the cruising drive, on the cruising points, you know, sort of like 40, 50 KPA, 2000 RPM. Um, but that I'd mostly do on the street. Uh, I just like the street, the dyno, this is a load cell dyno, so I can load it, but um, I always just find the street is the most accurate because that's where the car gets driven. So um, everything else, tunes up pretty much just like any other, you know, this is an early GM PCM. Um, like I said, it's a P01. So this is what, this is the same PCM that'd be uh, F bodies, you know, uh, uh, C5 Corvettes, trucks from, you know, the early LS trucks, 9904, that generation, that kind of gen three LS stuff is all, almost all P01. And then they transitioned to like P59s and, um, E40s and stuff like that, but the P01s were like the first LS uh, PCMs that GM used to do LS stuff. So a lot simpler than like a C6 Corvette with an E38 or an E67, a fifth gen Camaro, that type of stuff. A um, lot less stuff going on in these. So, uh, but these can still be tricky to tune because the Vets have an electronic throttle. The F bodies had an IAC valve that changed some stuff, but um, again, if you guys want to read about more of that stuff you can there's youtube video on top of youtube video about tuning these things so i just kind of go over like going over kind of how i do it um so you guys can kind of see the process and uh kind of see behind the scenes here so enough of my rambling that'll wrap it up for this one guys thanks for watching the channel and uh keep checking back for more we'll have uh some more mustangs coming up i got orange car out there. I got a GT, if you can even see it. I did that three valve. There's a GT350 behind it. So we got lots more stuff coming on the dyno. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll talk to you guys later.